You scare the agent into thinking they, they need a coach. You know, you take their money, and then if they try to back out of the contract, you, you go after them. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. So let me introduce uh, Ricky Carruth. Many of you know him, he's all over social media. The guy's dominating. Been in the business for 17 years. Uh, since 2014, he's sold over 100 transactions a year as, a, as an individual agent. Let's, let's get into a topic here as we get started. Talk to us about work-life balance. What does that look like for you to where you are able to keep relationships outside of work, right? Mm. Um, without having them go awry. Well, man, to be honest with you, I think of it in a way of like, I'm retired. You know what I'm saying? Every day when I wake up, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Nobody tells me what to do. I wake up at 4.30 for an hour, I answer DMs on Instagram. Um, I answer every single DM on Instagram because if I'm not answering all these questions that people are asking, desperately asking for help, then you know I'm not really backing up what I'm saying when I say I wanna help the industry. And you know, um, you know, teach agents how to effectively communicate and you know create unlimited business so work-life balance for me is that there is no work-life balance it's all it's all life you know there's no real like separation for me um you know when i'm at work like i'm I, <laughs> at work like i'm at work all I, like all times like when i'm with my family i'm giving that everything i got i'm spending time with them giving them every little you know drop of energy that i have to, to enjoy them, them enjoy me, the whole thing. Same thing when I'm when I'm doing a, a real estate deal, you know, or I'm showing property, or I'm making phone calls, or I'm doing a podcast, or I'm you know traveling to speak, or whatever the case may be. I'm just enjoying every second of whatever's going on, and there's really no, you know, I don't chop it up and say, okay, you know, I'm gonna time block this, I'm gonna time block that. No, I just enjoy life, you know what I'm saying? And so, <clears throat> I think I'm just a different kind of person where I can just live this blended life where it's all the same thing and I, and I have a full, I mean, it's not like it, it happened overnight, let's say that, you know, like I definitely went through times where everything was all about real estate, trying to figure out how to succeed, working 15 hours a day, getting burnt out, you know, trying to recharge and come back strong and go 15 hours a day for another three week stretch and really try to figure this thing out. So I've definitely been there, but you know, where I am now, see 17 years in the business and thousands of properties sold, I have such a huge database and I built it the right way on relationships and what can I do to help you? Not trying to force people to buy or sell anything. And because of that, I built such a huge brand around someone who just wants to help. Somebody who just wants to help people. And so, and, and around being the hardest working person around. Like everyone knows that no one outworks me. And so those two, that the combination of those two things, knowing that I'm just here to help you and that I'll work harder for you than anyone else makes me a magnet to people. You know, people are just drawn to me because they know I'm gonna get the job done. I'm not going to high pressure them or put them in weird situations or if they wanna back out because they get cold feet halfway through the deal, I'm not gonna make them feel bad about it. I'm gonna say, if that's not what you wanna do, then let's get out of this thing. You know, and I'm gonna make them feel comfortable about their decision because that's what they wanna do. And because of those things, it makes it to where I built a business where people come to me. I built an attraction business so big that I don't have to worry about where my business is coming from. So after doing that for so long, now I'm able to take time and write books and go speak and do podcasts and all that stuff and still maintain this high level of business. Because a lot of coaches, they get into the coaching industry after two years in the business and 12 properties sold and now they're a guru. And the thing is, is you know, when they try to make that leap, they don't really have any, they don't have a business. And so I waited, like I got in the business when I was 20, made a meal before I was 23, lost it all in the crash, went back to roofing houses, worked on an oil rig, came back, realized it was relationships over transactions, and then got to where I was selling 100 properties a year. So like I made it, lost it, made it, and so now here I am making it 100 properties a year, well, I didn't know if that was real or not because I had it before I lost it. So I was thinking, is this real? So I gave myself three years, three years of selling 100 properties a year as a single agent before I decided maybe I should write a book about this stuff and how I did this. And so I just, I wait, I'm really notorious for waiting too long 
probably too long, but it's it's not a bad thing. Waiting too long to do things. You know, like I'm still a single agent. You know, when am I gonna do a team? You know, like I waited so long to hire an assistant. I waited so long to start coaching and writing and speaking. I waited so long to get into social media. I just started doing social media two and a half years ago. Um, I never touched it before then. As far as the work-life balance question, I just think that you have to just do what you love to do, you know, and, and like, I love roofing houses. I love working on an oil rig. I love delivering pizzas. I love cooking in a restaurant. You know, all the things that I did, all the different jobs that I had, I loved every bit of it, you know? That's just how I am. I guess I'm just a very positive person. I love just being active and productive. And because of that, it makes my life really incredible because literally me producing is my therapy. You know, like all the rough moments in my life, I literally just worked through them. Like I would go to work and work so hard at, at work, it got my mind off whatever bad was going on. And it like, it helps me cope with whatever's going on and produce more, you know? So I was just lucky enough, I think, to have the DNA of, you know, production as my therapy kind of deal. I really appreciate what you said there. It was interesting. I was pulling out of the garage this morning, had my daughter in the car, I was driving around to school, and the garage door went up and I said, another day doing what I love. And uh, she kind of looked at me and I, I don't think that's a common answer. I think a lot of people it's like, oh, thank goodness it's Friday. I can't wait until this is over. Like it's this terrible treatment. I know Gary Vaynerchuk talks a lot about this. I felt like if you hate what you do, life's way too short for that. I sat in a convention in which a gentleman who has done deep, deep uh, studies on the human brain discovered that um, that there's a sense of joy that we were made to have like people it's it's natural for them to be in a state of joy it's unnatural for them to be in a state of fear the only way to really experience joy is to is to not look at people as things or as a means to an end but they are the source of our joy they are the reason that we're gonna experience that and it ties in perfectly with what I think is maybe a secret to why Ricky Carruth is able to be so dang excited no matter what he's doing is because he's looking at the relationship first it's not like how many deals like what's it gonna take for me to get over 100 transactions this year it's like how many people can I help and if I can't help that person I'm gonna be the first to tell them I can't help you you should stay in your house is that true would you does that all connect for you yeah, I think it's the intention for sure. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, it's, am I gonna give it everything I have today? Am I gonna go to bed tonight knowing that I gave it, gave, you know, put everything out there, I left it all on the field, and, you know, there wasn't a drop of energy. I literally, you know, passed out because I was so tired. Um, you know, like when you combine the fact that you're doing every, you, you're, you're going full speed ahead, there's no way you could have done any more. And with the right intentions to help the most people, when you combine those two things, now you're deadly. I would have to agree with you. I think there's, um, work ethic is often underestimated. Uh, to your point, I think that you can have all kinds of good intentions and warm feelings for people and want to help them. But if you don't put in the time and the hours, like Ricky Caruth is doing, right? Get up at 4.30 to really respond to strangers that have no in direct impact upon your business. They're not coaching clients because you're not charging them, but simply responding because you love the industry and because you love people, that, that probably is a fuel for you to then go do good for your clients. Well, it is. I mean, the DMs and the, the comments and the replies and the emails and all that are literally the fuel that keeps me going because you know, the one reason I got into coaching is because I, I felt like I kind of hit the top of the real estate game. Like, I just felt like I hit the top. There wasn't anything else that was challenging. It just, there was no challenge there left for me. Um, and so that's why I got into the coaching. And man, did I really step into a, a beehive because it is a super, like, it's a totally different, you know, you know, real estate is local, coaching is global you know and so there's a big difference uh in the two you know if i'm not like i said if if i'm not stepping up and you know answering these questions i mean th these people are reaching out with desperate for help you know they just this industry is such a such a bear because you know it, it's so simple but you know it, it seems so complicated 
Like it can really fool you into thinking that it's so complicated when really it's so simple. And you know, we're talking about people's livelihoods on the line. You know, this is their, you know, they're, this, they're trying to support their family with this stuff. This is stressful. You know, this is real. This is real life stuff. And if I, I don't, I, I just feel like these people are reaching out to me for help. And if I'm not, if I'm not stepping up and, and you know, cause there's a lot of people in my shoes that absolutely completely ignore DMs, messages, emails, tech, they they completely ignore uh, that stuff. And, and I get it, <laughs> like, it's a lot of work. Um, but I just feel like I'm different and I feel like I want to be there. And I feel like that's, that. I feel like that's one thing that I have over so many coaches and mentors and even the big guys, you know, like the Gary V's and the, the Grants and the, you know, the Tonys, you know, they don't answer every single message. You know, they don't, they, they can't. There's too many of them, I get it. I do, you know, so I just feel like I'm not doing my job and I'm not doing the industry justice if I'm not doing it. You know, as I, even in my small market of Portland, Oregon, as I see, there's some agents who really want it. And when you're getting started, as you know, trying to fund a family and a business at the same time, you need a lot more revenue than you think you do. And, uh, you know, I do see some coaching programs really helping people, but I see some that, that probably aren't a good idea based on the revenue that that agent is bringing in. Uh, there's, there's just not enough revenue to be investing in a coach. And so I think that you create a really powerful bridge to, and at some point it may make sense for those people to, to pay coaching, but for, for a lot of the people that are just getting started, I don't know that it ever does at that level. And I could be wrong. Um, I know you have a different train of thought saying like, no, it never makes sense. Um, but well, it just depends. It just depends on the coach and everything. But you know, you got you got a lot of I, you know. I'd love to know the statistics behind the agents that take out a credit card to pay for coaching that actually don't have the money to pay a thousand a month for coaching and go into yeah. debt, go into debt paying for a coach that turns around and doesn't tell them anything different than what's on YouTube. You know, it, it's horrible. And then if they try to get out of the contract, they got creditors that come after them. I mean, how how is that helping the industry? You scare the agent into thinking that you need, that they need a coach. They have to pay this thousand dollars a month or they won't succeed. You know, you take their money and then if they try to back out of the contract, you, you go after them. You know, you put them in debt. You know, the only thing motivating the agent at that point is how to get out of debt, not the coach. And now we gotta figure out, you know, how we're gonna pay this off and they won't let us out of the contract even though it's not helping us, you know? So yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it, 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 is a, it is a rough uh, industry to be honest with you. And, I'm just hoping I can spread my message far enough to, and I already have set, saved a lot of agents, to be honest with you. So many agents reach out and say, man, I'm so glad I found you before I paid, you know, God knows what, or, you know, hey, I was about to quit three months ago and I found you somewhere. I get messages like that all the time.